morning, St. John's. Welcome, welcome, welcome. After ending the week on a positive note, three wonderful days of prayer and fasting. Is it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen, amen. For me, it was very refreshing and fulfilling those three days. And uh, what really, I think the, the high point, what won my heart was the turnout we had on Friday night. Amen? I think my wife said it was like 60 out of us here Friday night. All united in community, common purpose, common prayer. For all for the good of the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right, I ask that you'll just stand with me as we will go into our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to give you thanks, Lord, and we just want to acknowledge how great you are in this world, Lord, how, you, how great you are to us, even on an individual level, Lord. And as we all gather here now, Lord, for this service today, we ask that your Holy Spirit will be in the midst that the Holy Spirit will lead this service, Lord, and that the Holy Spirit will see to the needs and see to the wants of each person that comes through the door here today in our Lord. We ask, Lord, that we will, we ask that you will be with the, the musicians, Lord, as they lift up their voice to you. They will lead the church in praise and worship, Lord. We ask that you will be with our Pastor Warwick today, Lord, know that he would have prepare his sermon Lord I ask that you would be with him and you will lift up a voice and you will give him the right knowledge to impart on his flock Lord Heavenly Father we give you thanks for the audio visual ministry Lord as we also minister not just to those within the walls but those also out there in the social media world Lord Heavenly Father we just also want to give you thanks and I ask that the Holy Spirit will continue to dwell within the different ministries church of the church lord I ask that you will help us to fulfill the aim of the church lord promoting spiritual development lord through the various ministries lord once again i just want to say i was very touched i was very blessed by the turn we had friday we have started as a community with the right foot forward lord and i ask that you will you will just continue to be the wind behind our steps lord as we look to have growth within the church lord but for now for us to have growth within the church we need to have that individual growth lord because we have strength in numbers but individuals make up that numbers lord so for each person who who, who is seeking that, that that breakthrough lord who is probably just asking for that healing who's just asking for that 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 way that they're looking out lord and for some they just want that support they just want that love we know how great you are lord you have shown it to us time and time again. Sometimes we get caught up in the, the mundane and the everyday activities that we may forget, Lord. But those three days last week was the perfect renewing, Lord, that I think many of us have been looking for, Lord. And we just give you thanks, sincere thanks for that now, Lord. Once again, Lord, we just want to pray today's evangelism Sunday, Lord. We just ask that the, the words will go out today, Lord, and we just touch that right person. It will give them the comfort that they need, Lord. Once again, Lord, it's only through you, Lord. We just ask that whatever our need is, that you will just supply it during this week, Lord. Take us safely through this week, and next Sunday we will gather once again, Lord, just to praise, worship, honor you, just to give you our all, Lord. All this and more we ask, Lord. Amen. Right, so I said that uh, today is Evangelism Sunday, and... Uh, uh, okay, right. So, so Friday night, my wife bought home the the list of service leaders, right? But I never look on it Friday. I was focused on the prayer and fast. And this Saturday morning, I, I looked on the list and I saw that the tenth. I said, "Oh, shucks, the tenth is tomorrow." So that means I'm involved in in the lead in, in in leading the service. So the first thing that came to mind is, you know, what is evangelism? And I just looked up a quick definition. I just said that evangelism is spreading of the gospel by public preaching or personal witness. And I'm going to think more about the personal witness part. I just want to say, folks, just a reminder that as we go through this week, we are brand Jesus every day. No matter in what we think, in what we say, in how we act, we are brand Jesus. We are representing Jesus. Amen. And this morning, I just looked up, just flipping through various Bible verses, I came across one that I just want to share with you quickly. 
2 Corinthians 5, verse 20, which says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. But I'll now ask the praise and worship team just to lead us in our opening chorus. Praise the Lord. Good morning in the house. We give God praise. Je Jehovah is his name. Hallelujah. Your hands unto the Lord this morning as we lift his name on high. Jehovah is your name. Thank you, praise and worship team. You may have your seats. And what we will have now, we'll ask Pastor Warwick. He will just come forward and he will just give us a 
warm Pastor Warwick welcome. And afterwards, in his own style, we'll have Deacon Roder. He will come forward and he will share with us the relevant announcements. Amen. Thank you, Brother Marlon. Thank you, Brother Jackson, for leading us in worship this morning. Is God good today? Is God good today? Yes. So if you don't say yes, then you're not alive. Maybe you're not in your right mind. Because if you're alive and you're in your right mind, then you ought to know that God is good. Amen? You may not have everything that you want. You may not be feeling as great as you would like to feel. Maybe there's some little aches and pains. Maybe there's some challenges that you face. Whether it is in your family, or in your finances, on your job, wherever. But that doesn't negate the fact that God is good. <laughs> it does not negate the fact that God is good. Amen? God is faithful. And God is true. And God is love. He's immutable and unchanging in those characteristics. And we thank God this morning for that because that's why, that's why we can trust him we could rely on him. We can put our lives in his hands. We are thankful to God this morning for all whom the Holy Spirit has led to be in our midst today. And we know, as we always say here at St. John's, anybody who walks through those doors, you are not here by chance. You may not even be here by choice. But you are here because the Spirit of God led you to be here. Amen? Amen. And we believe that if the Spirit of God leads you here, that he has a blessing just for you. Every member of St. John's, God has a blessing just for you. Every visitor this morning, God has a blessing just for you. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord some praise. And uh, I, want to, I want to take this opportunity to welcome a friend from... A long time ago. I'm not even going to say how long, but she, 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 she was around when I gave my life to Christ. And she was around when we were involved in the youth ministry uh, in, in, in the Baptist Union. Um, she traveled abroad. She still lives abroad, but she's always in touch with, with us here. And I want to welcome Carleen Faraday. We, know her, we knew her before as Carleen Monsigi. She's now Carleen Faraday. God bless you. Originally from the Fifth Company Baptist Church and uh, now residing abroad. She's a minister of the gospel as well. Yes, she's a minister of the gospel as well. You know, that, that age, that little era, Carleen, God raised up some very, very faithful leaders, faithful leadership, uh, many of whom are now serving in Trinidad and churches in Trinidad and also churches abroad. So we give God thanks for what he was doing then and we are praying. We are praying. This is our prayer right now at St. John's that God will raise up a new generation of leaders for the next generation that, that is to come. Maybe the next two generations to come because our day and time is quickly uh, fading. Yeah? I didn't hear much amens for that one, but <laughs> it's the truth. We are not going to be around forever. And, and, and the, 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 the more we recognize that, is the more we need to, to invest in the lives of, of those who are coming. Amen? We are sowing into their lives so that the next 40 years, uh, God will have persons who are, who are really committed in, in service to him, yeah? So, Carleen, welcome. We trust that you'll truly enjoy the service today and God will truly bless you. You say you couldn't remember my wife? She's sitting right next to you. <laughs> the, the face mask sometimes, yeah, shows us off, yes. And next to her, of course, is another uh, good friend of ours from the Southland as well. Um... She, too, grew up with us in, in South, in uh, the churches down there. And it's so nice to have you with us. I, 
Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. <laughs> so nice to have you with us, Lisa. God bless you as well um, for joining Carleen this morning. I want to say a, a, a big word of thanks to all of our uh, prayer group leaders. All of the prayer group leaders who, who led your, your prayer teams so faithfully over the last uh, time of prayer and fast, the three days. Let's give our, our prayer team leaders a good round of applause. Thank you. And God bless you for what you are doing. Because what you are doing is really helping to lift the hands of the pastor. I can't be in everything. I can't be everywhere. But as, as, as you lead in your own space, you are lifting my hands and you are extending the kingdom of God into your community right where you are. Amen? And I was so happy I heard that one team actually invited uh, 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 someone from the community who was not part of the church. Come on. Yeah, that's, that's the spirit. That is the spirit that embodies our our mission statement to be a caring evangelistic church yeah we're caring we're evangelizing we're using every opportunity to bring people to a, to a face-to-face confrontation with jesus christ amen so this is what we are we are we are looking for that in every team in every group that you will not only have a little clique to enjoy yourself and have a nice time but that you 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 invite someone yeah? Invite someone. Someone says that evangelism, evangelism, Marlon, as well. You had a definition this morning. Right. Evangelism is the spreading of the gospel by public preaching or personal witness. Evangelism is the spreading of the gospel by public preaching or by personal witness. Personally. You, and someone else said that, that, that evangelism is like one beggar going down the road, finding food, and coming back to his other beggar friends and telling them, listen boy, we find some food down there, let's go. <laughs> you know, that's evangelizing. That's what we are doing. Amen? And I want to say thanks to all of you, all the members who came out on, uh, on Friday evening, the young people, the children. Oh my God, what a joy it was, what a joy it was. I, I, I went home and I had to talk about that testimony from Nathan London. It was, no, it, 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 it struck me because he stood up there. And you know, young people like that, they tend to want to run away from the limelight. Nathan, he run, he stood up like a man. And when he didn't get everything coming, he waited until the Lord put something else for him to say, you know, that's, that, that, was, that was really refreshing, refreshing and rewarding and, and encouraging. Oh yes, we give God thanks for what he's doing in our midst, amen. We give God praise. Come on, let's, let's take a little one minute praise break right now. Let, let's, let's, let's sing a little song of joy. Let's sing a little song of joy. I know you didn't get this one, but let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> let's take a little one minute praise break, amen. Every praise is to our God. Amen. Every word of worship. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. Yes. Go on. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. In one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise, every praise, lift it up. Oh, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, Ooh. every praise is to our God. God. Every praise, every praise. Ooh. Come on, sing out Every hallelujah. praise is to our God. Every, every, word, of every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every 
Union Assembly, virtually this year, of course, virtual assembly, and the dates are in your, in your bulletins, assembly the 30th and 31st, the 30th is business session, our business sessions, and of course the Sunday, the 31st, we are asking persons to come to church, and you will follow the service via uh, a live stream coming from the Mount Elvin Baptist Church. Okay? Uh, so churches do not have to be closed as, as we would normally do um, on Assembly Sunday. We cannot hold everyone in, in one location. All right? So you can come to church and you'll be able to uh, participate in the Assembly Sunday service uh, via a live stream. That's yes, Saturday's delegates, of course, the same delegates who were uh, who joined us last assembly would be the same delegates that we are using this year. So if you were a delegate last year, what you need to do, you'll be sent a link. All right, you'll be sent a link so that you can join us for our business sessions. And it is time for you to vote. You have voting rights as a delegate from St. John's. Okay. And, and that's why we need you there, because you would need to vote on some, some matters, particularly the strategic plan. We have completed that strategic plan, and we have an operations plan that is being rolled out at this assembly. And uh, it's very important that you, 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 you be a part of that, okay? So that you can understand the vision and the mission of the Baptist Union for the next uh, five years in the first instance, and hopefully for the next 10 years in the long term. All right, so that's it for Baptist Union. Uh, Brother Keith? All the best to you. Um, just two birthdays recognition coming up this week. That's on Tuesday we have um, Sister Barbara Punch. Samson celebrating her birthday. And the day after that would be Brother Nicholas Valentine celebrating his birthday. So that's the 12th and the 13th of this month, to be this week. So we can call them and wish them all the best. That's all I have for this week. Yeah. 
Yes, we are lifting God's name on high. You know, he has came to show us the way he left all the way from heaven. So we just want to give God praise. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad you came to save us. You came, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross.
For they that wait upon the Lord, oh yes, Lord, and they will mount up with wings like eagles. Run and not weary. Walk and not faint. Waiting, Lord. Teach us how to wait. Teach us how to wait, Lord. Amen. Today is... Oh, by the way, before I, I, I forget, there are two persons who we haven't seen for a little while. Avalon, I, I, God raised you up and brought you out here to church this morning. That's why we're praising God, you know. That's why we're worshiping God. Hallelujah. God bless you. The enemy tried to take her out, but the devil had to run when Jesus had come. Amen. Hallelujah. And of course, Dr. Hemmings, we hadn't seen you for a little while. Well, at least I hadn't seen you. Good to see you this morning at the forefront of the battle uh, against COVID-19. Putting himself, of course, in harm's way along with other doctors and nurses. And we thank God for for those whom he has given the ability and the skill and the wherewithal to not only take care of the sick, but to administer healing. Amen? Amen. We have been looking at the feeding of the 5,000. We have looked at it within the subject or the context of putting everything in the master's hands. Place it in the master's hands. Whatever it might be. As small as it might be. When you put it in the master's hands. He multiplies it. And he uses it for his glory. Today of course is evangelism Sunday. And I still want to focus on the same. Feeding of the multitude, the feeding of the 5,000, but I want to, to look at it within the context of evangelism. Because for those of you who have read the Gospel of John, you would know that the Gospel of John states very specifically that it was written with an evangelistic purpose. John chapter 20 and verse 31 Slide should come up. John chapter 20 and verse 31 says, Well, I'll read from verse 30. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. So, that is the purpose for John the Evangelist writing this gospel. And including the things that he included in it. There are many things that John did not include. But what he did include, he included it so that men might believe that Jesus is the Christ. And in believing, they would have eternal life. That is what evangelism is about. So what is there in this gospel miracle? What is there in the feeding of the 5,000? Well, really should be the feeding of 20,000 as, as I've indicated to you. Because there were 5,000 men. And that did not include the women and the children. So if you include the women and the children, because wherever men go, women, let me put it in Trinidadian parlance, where women go, where men go, women does go. Right? Wherever you find men, you are going to find women. And wherever you find women, you're going to find children. So when you, when you add, you know, 5,000 men, and if each man had a wife, that's 10,000. And if each husband and wife had two children, that's about 20,000 there already. 
All right. So, what is it in this miracle that speaks to evangelism? What? What is the evangelistic content of this miracle? Because when you think about it, brothers and sisters, this, if this miracle is a sign, this miracle is a sign of what? Signs, as you know, do not point to themselves. If you're walking up Frederick Street, you see a sign at the bottom of Frederick Street. Where the sign is, that alone is not Frederick Street. That sign is pointing you in the direction of Frederick Street. Are you with me? This miracle then is a sign pointing to what? Pointing to what? There are three things I believe that this miracle points us to. There are three important evangelistic truths that come from this passage. As you know, the men were out in the desert. The, the families were out in the desert place. The Bible says that they were desperate. They were hungry. The evening came. They had nothing to eat. They checked to see whether they had enough money. To, to buy food for the crowd and there wasn't enough money. The Bible says there were only about 200 denarii which was about a, a, a man's uh, wage for maybe over a period of about 80 days and that still wasn't enough. They found a little boy with five loaves and two fish and of course the Bible tells us that still was not enough. I believe that the first thing that we learn from this miracle in terms of evangelism, is that people everywhere are hungry and needy. People need the Lord. The physical hunger, the physical thirst, the physical desperation that these 20,000 people were facing was not just about feeding their bellies. What this was actually pointing to is the hunger, the spiritual hunger that every human being on the face of the earth struggles with. Everywhere, people are hungry. There is a hunger that is in the heart of every human being. And there is a thirst in the stomach of every human being. And that hunger and that thirst is not just for physical food. That's why Jesus had to say, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Because after you have struggled to satisfy your physical hunger, what next? What next? After you have struggled to satisfy your, your physical thirst, what next? Have you ever felt a time when you, you, you eat as much as you could and you're still not satisfied? You eat a, a lot of food but you're still not satisfied. Hmm? You have tried all kinds of different pleasures but you're still not satisfied. You've tried some, some, some weed. You've tried some coke. You've tried some sex. You've tried some of all that the world has to offer. The material things that this world has to offer. And there is still a hunger on the inside. Because man was created like that. We were created for God. God created us for himself. And until you find Christ Jesus, until you find God one more time, you will never be fully satisfied. And you would see later on in this same passage that Jesus confronted these people. He confronted them. If you look at John chapter 6, go a little further down in John chapter 6, verse 26 and 27. Jesus confronted them because they were, they were following him. They were running after him. He came down from the mountain. Went across the lake. And somehow the people who were on the mountain with him found him across the, on the other side. 
Why were they running after him? Listen to what Jesus says to them in verse 26. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you, are, you, are, you ate your fill of the loaves. And then he said to them, Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. So Jesus had to confront them because he realized that they were, they were coming after him. And there's a lesson for us, you know, brethren. There are a lot of people who run to church, not because they want Jesus, but because they want healing, they want some kind of blessing, they're going through some problems in their life, they're hungry for something, and they follow Jesus to get their physical needs satisfied. God doesn't care too much about what brings you to Christ. Whatever it takes for a person to come to know Jesus, God will allow it to happen. If God realizes that the way he will get your attention is by allowing you to go through some pressure, he will allow it. If God realizes that the way to get your attention is to cause you to lie down on a hospital bed for a while, he will allow it. If God realizes that the way to get your attention is to, to allow some, some disruption in your home and in your family, he will allow it. And if God realizes that the way to get your attention is to be so good to you, that all you could say is, Lord, you're too good to me. I can't do anything else but serve you. He will be good to you. Because the Bible says the goodness of God leads man to repentance. Have you ever, you, ever, you ever been so bad that you condemn yourself and then you realize, but you know, God has still been so good to me? Oh, that drives you back to Calvary. The point that is being made here in, in this passage is that everywhere, all over the world, people need the Lord. We need Jesus. We are needy people. We are needy. None of us like needy people. They always come in, they're begging. They always, you, ever, you have people around you like that. Every time they, you see them, it's because they want something. Hmm? When you see them come in, sometimes they want to run and hide. Because they know it's something they come in to ask for. Something they come in to beg for. Something they come in to borrow. You know? There are people like that. And we are like that. When we think about how we relate to God. Many of us, the only time we go to God is when we want something. So, be aware that everywhere, all over this world, every single human being is needy, hungry, desperate. The Bible says even our righteousness are like filthy rats before God. We are a desperate people. And until you come to the point where you acknowledge that need, until you come to a place where you acknowledge that desperation, where you realize that I cannot make it on my own, I need you, Jesus. I need your love. I need your salvation. I need your grace. When you come to that place, then you're ready for salvation. We are all needy. That's the first thing. The other thing that this passage teaches us is that People cannot meet their own needs. We cannot meet our own needs. We are insufficient for the things that confront us. We are insufficient. When it comes to meeting man's eternal and spiritual needs, human effort is insufficient. Look at how much they tried in order to get the food to feed these people. Hmm? What they tried? They tried logic. Jesus said to Philip, Philip, go and find some food. Philip said, well, listen, Lord, I, I search around to everybody in the crowd and all I could come up with is 200, let's say $200 to feed 20,000 people. Is that enough? Logic will not lead us to salvation. 
In fact, the more you philosophize, is the more you realize how inadequate and how insufficient we are. Philosophy does not bring salvation. When God looked down and he saw the needs of man, he didn't send a philosopher. When God looked down and he saw the needs of men, he didn't send an accountant. Mm -mm. Some people believe that money could help. But money is insufficient to satisfy the needs of men. Oh, I, not too long ago I heard a, a little documentary. And some of you may not like this illustration, but it, it spoke to me. The husband of Beyonce. Jay-Z spent most of his life trying to build wealth. And of course he was building it on the philosophy uh, that some men, men, men walk by and live by. Get wealth at any cost. Get rich at any cost. And he lived on that basis. But he got to a point where his marriage started to fail. And he realized that all the time he was spending making money, it wasn't helping in the most important things in life. Now, I don't know if Jay-Z got converted. Eh? Don't ask me that. We had to ask the Lord that. Right? But somewhere along the line, he came to an understanding that money alone was not the most important thing in life. And he began to change his priorities. He changed his focus. Because all the money that he had, all the wealth that he accumulated was not satisfying that important need in his life. The need for a sense of fulfillment. The need to feel that your family loves you. Listen, I don't care how much money you're working for. I don't care whether you have 10 degrees and a doctorate. I, I am here this morning to tell you that if you do not have Jesus Christ, then you are still inadequate. You are still without the most important thing in life. Try logic. They tried, they tried money. They tried bringing... And, and they, most of what we do in life is, is selfish, you know, brethren. When you really think about it, you know, we focus on self. It is about us. And this, this, this parable or this story, this miracle that Jesus did, it reminds us, brothers and sisters, it's not just about me. It's not just about what I have and what I want. It is about what God requires of me. What does the Lord require of you? What does the Lord want from me? Have you ever asked that? Well, oh, what does the Lord want from you? You know what he wants? All that you have. All that you have. He wants your life. He wants your mind. He wants your heart. He wants to take your, your mistakes. He wants to take your weaknesses. Everything. The little that you have and you feel that is not enough. He wants that too. He wants your heart. Even if your heart may be, may be, may be broken. He wants it. He will fix it. Oh, can I say that to somebody this morning? Even if your heart is broken, give it to the Lord. He knows how to fix broken hearts. Hallelujah. He knows how to fix broken lives. He will take it and he will mend it. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We all need the Lord. We are needy. And we cannot satisfy that need on our own. And in our own strength. The final thing that this passage teaches us. A simple message this morning you know. Simple message of salvation. A simple evangelistic message this morning. We all need Jesus. We cannot satisfy our own needs. We are inadequate. But the Bible tells us in no uncertain terms in this miracle. That Jesus is sufficient to meet all our needs. How much more simple you can get it than that. Hmm? Jesus is sufficient to meet all our needs. 
Brothers and sisters, Jesus is in control of every situation. When Jesus asked the question, where will we find enough food to feed the multitude? You think he was asking questions? He knew. He understood exactly what was going on. And he was in control of that situation from beginning to end. Jesus knows what you are going through. He knows that sense of need that you feel. He knows that sense of insufficiency that you feel. He understands that, 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 that desperation that you feel. He knows. The Bible tells us he's acquainted with grief and sorrow. He understands because he himself faced it. But the good thing about it is that he has compassion and delight in meeting our spiritual needs. Jesus has a delight. Jesus wants to meet your need more than you are willing to tell him. He takes delight in meeting the needs of mankind. All through scripture. The Bible tells us at one time Jesus looked out on Jerusalem and he saw the Israelites. He saw them looking like sheep without a shepherd. And the Bible says it grieved his heart and he, he felt compassion on them. For every lost sheep, Christ has compassion. For every lost soul, Christ has compassion. For every needy case, Christ has compassion. For every desperate heart, Christ has compassion. He's not limited by any inadequate resource. <laughs> He's not limited in what he could supply and provide for us. Amen. The Bible says he is Lord of all. He is King of kings and he is Lord of all. Every resource that you need, Christ can supply. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. If you need salvation, he will provide. If you want pardon, he will provide. If you want peace, he will provide. He has it in full supply. And he said it to the woman at the well. How many of you remember the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman? She got there because in the middle of the day, she could not come to the, the well at other times because she was considered as a, as, an, as a dirty woman, as an unclean woman. She could not touch or could not be around others. The Bible says Jesus had to go through Samaria that day because he had to meet with her. He went to the well and he asked her, he said, woman, give me some water to drink. And she tried all kind of little logic to get out of that commitment. Jesus had to say to her, he said, woman, if you knew who was speaking to you this morning, you would ask for water so that you will never ever have to come back to this well again. <laughs> Hallelujah. He would satisfy her, her, her desire. He would satisfy the longing in her heart that caused her to be moving from man to man and from hand to hand. Jesus said, I will satisfy that deep desire that you're not even aware of. He says, come and I will give you the water of life. And he's saying that to us this morning. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. If you eat of me, you will never hunger. He says, I am the water of life. You drink of me and you will never thirst. Today, brothers and sisters, there may be someone in the midst. Someone in the midst here today who acknowledges, Lord, I need you. I am needy. I'm desperate. My heart is desperate. I need you, Lord. I acknowledge I'm a sinner and I'm in need of you. I've tried other things. And they have not worked. And I believe that you, Jesus, you can supply all of my needs. When you come to Jesus, you must know first of all, brothers and sisters, that you are going to be forgiven. You are going to be forgiven. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. I'm taking you quickly through these verses. It says, if, well, go to 8. Go to 8. Go to 8. It says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess 
he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. That's the word of the Lord. He is able to forgive you of all unrighteousness. All of your sins. Amen. That's one of the needs that every human being has. The need for forgiveness. And Jesus says, I will provide that for you full and complete. Not only are you forgiven, but Jesus provides reconciliation. Reconciliation means that you, you were once an enemy of God because of sin. Now, through Christ Jesus, you have been reconciled back together again. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This is a message not for believers. Yeah, this is a message for unbelievers this morning. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. What does it say? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. Hallelujah. The old has passed away. The old life, the old sin, the old ways, the old Anselm, the old John, the old Jonathan, the old Sam is passed away. And you've got a new, a new slate, a new opportunity, a new lease on life. The old has passed and the new has come. Verse 18 says, all this is from God, not from yourself. All this happens because of God, not because of your logic, not because you understand everything, not because you have been such a good person. All this is from God. Who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. See that? Through Christ we are reconciled. So we now have peace with God one more time. We can walk in friendship with God. Because the old enemy of sin has been removed. That barrier that separated you from God is removed. Amen. And you now have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Thirdly, so we are forgiven, we are reconciled. Hmm? And by faith in Jesus Christ, the work of salvation is finished in us. By faith, that's what you need to do. Put your faith and your confidence in Christ. John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. Jesus. Well John speaking. He came to his own. To his own people. And they did not receive him. But to all who did receive him. Who believed in his name. He gave the right. Come on somebody. You now have the right. To become. A child of God. By right. No, not just by, by creation. Because all of us by creation, we are God's children. God created everything and everyone. But by right now. Hallelujah. By inheritance now. I am now a son of God. Hmm. I have, I have the right to approach God. I have the right to receive certain things from God. I have the right to acknowledge certain promises from God. I have rights now as a child of God. When you are, when you are forgiven and you are reconciled to God, you now have rights. Just like Prince Harry and Prince William has, have rights. You and I now have rights. We could walk into the presence of God Anytime, anywhere. We have the right for God to listen to us. We have the right to receive healing. We have the right to receive blessing. We have the right to receive God's goodness and God's kindness. I no longer have to run from God. I cannot run to God.
The other thing that this passage reminds us of is the importance not only of being forgiven, being reconciled, and of putting faith in Christ, but of following Jesus in baptism and surrender. Acts chapter 2, as I close. Acts chapter 2. We'll come up on your screen. Verse 37 and 38. Now when they heard this, the this meaning the message, yeah? Peter had just preached a message like I am preaching now. A message of forgiveness and reconciliation and faith in Jesus Christ. When they heard this message, they were cut to the heart. And that word means they were, they were convicted. When, when the Bible says they were cut to the heart, it means they were convicted. They recognized in their hearts that they were not right with God. And they were convicted of their sin. They were cut to the heart. And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? Are you at that place this morning where you're asking, Lord, what to do? What shall I do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39, I want to read that too. For the promise is for you, and for your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Brothers and sisters, this is the gospel. This is the reason why this feeding of the 5,000 was recorded in the Bible. It was recorded to remind us that we are all needy, desperate, hungry people without Christ. It was recorded to remind us that nothing that we do, we are insufficient. We could never find enough food to feed our spiritual lives. You could never ever do enough to earn heaven. Never. It is only by faith. And Jesus says this morning, he is willing to forgive. He's ready and willing that you might be reconciled to God by faith in Jesus. If you put your faith in him this morning, if you say, Lord, I believe, you will be saved. If you, you follow Jesus this morning, in the act of baptism, now we're not going to baptize you this morning, but we'll prepare you for baptism. After that, brothers and sisters, you will be walking in the joy of the Lord. After that, you'll be able to experience a, a time of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. You will know the deep sense of freedom. Freedom from the guilt of sin. Freedom from the penalty of sin. Freedom from the, 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 the weight and the burden that sin brings. You will be set free, delivered, and made whole in Christ Jesus. Are you there this morning? Is there someone in the midst? On this evangelism Sunday, who's ready and willing to say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, I believe. Lord, I'm ready. If you are here this morning and that is your state, that is your condition, let's stand, let's all stand this morning in this very divine moment, in this moment of divine transactions. God is at work today in your heart. You have heard the good news of the gospel. And you are ready to say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender. If that is your case, I want you to leave where you're standing. As the worship team sings that wonderful song. I surrender all to you. Everything I give. To you withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. I surrender, Lord, I, I surrender all to you. Everything I, I give, I give to, give to you. you. Withholding nothing. 
nothing. With holding nothing. One moment, one moment, one yeah. moment. If you are here this morning and that is the cry of your heart, I want you to leave where you're standing and just walk to the altar as a sign, as a symbol of your faith. As a symbol of your faith this morning, will you come and stand before God? That is your way of saying, Lord, I acknowledge Hallelujah. that I'm a sinner. Glory. I acknowledge that I need you. I'm desperate this morning. And I need you this morning, Lord. And I surrender right now. I surrender to you, Lord. And I will not hold back anything. I will not hold back anything, Lord. Whatever you ask of me. Whatever you ask of me, Lord, Hallelujah. I will do it. Hallelujah. Is there anyone else this morning? Oh, and I surrender. Amen. Let's pray. Let's, let's just stretch your hands towards this family. And let's pray that God will take full charge and full control this morning. Father God, we acknowledge the movement of your spirit. Hallelujah. In the hearts Hallelujah. of these three who are standing Lord, before you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give you all the praise and the glory, Jesus. Hey, yeah, 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 Lord. Hey, Jesus. Korobo sheke tere ba standara ba jo. Hmm. Hey, Lord. Lord, we acknowledge that without your spirit, they could not have responded. For it is by your spirit that we are convicted of sin and judgment and righteousness. And Lord God, we are thankful this morning that they have turned away from their own ways. Turned away from their own resources. Turned away, oh God, from their own logic. And they have now turned to put their faith and their confidence in what Jesus did for them. And what only God can do. So Father, I pray right now that what you alone could do, you would do it in their hearts right now. Break the power of cancelled sin. And set them free this morning. In the name of Jesus. Break every stranglehold of the enemy. Every generational curse. Everything that would have held them back. Break it now, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Help them to know that the old is past. And the new has come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fill them with your spirit this morning, oh God. Fill them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Help them to know the joy of sins forgiven. Help them to know, oh God, the freedom that comes in letting go and letting God. Father God, I pray now that you will give them, Lord, the joy of being children of God. Hallelujah. They will know deep in their hearts that they are no longer under condemnation of sin, but they are now walking in righteousness by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for doing it, Lord. Thank you for doing it right now, God. They don't have to wait until they die to know that they are saved. They don't have to wait until they reach to the gates of glory to find out. But they know from now, right now, that they are born again, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, and walking in obedience to you. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, have your way in me. Have your way in me. Have your way in us. Have your way in St. John's your Baptist way. Church. Have your way in all of your people everywhere. In our families, in our homes. 
Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Lord, have, have your, your way. way. Hey. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of it.